From elation to anger to apathy, Muslim reactions to the death of Osama bin Laden span the spectrum. But here in the U.S., the Obama administrations, well, they seem to be stuck on one attitude in particular, hypersensitivity between the religious burial at sea and now the decision not to release bin Laden's death photos. So why does the president appear to be walking on eggshells to avoid offending the Muslim world? Now, just listen to White House Press Secretary Jay Carney explain, well, the painstaking efforts that were taken care of in terms of the court of the world's most notorious terrorist. The, the respect that was shown to him and his body uh, was far greater than the respect that Osama bin Laden showed to the victims on 9-11 or any of his other victims. Uh, and that's because that's who we are. Uh, so we feel very comfortable with the fact that we uh, took uh, extraordinary measures to, to show that respect uh, to the traditions of the Islamic faith. Now, meanwhile, the president is scheduled to travel to Ground Zero tomorrow for a wreath-laying ceremony to mark the death of the mastermind behind 9-11. And despite the fact that he did actually invite President Bush to accompany him on the visit, many Americans are still asking, is President Obama giving enough credit where credit is due? Joining me with Reaction is the author of the number one New York Times bestseller, Culture of Corruption. Michelle Malkin is back with us. Michelle, good to see you. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me back, Sean. Now, that, when he goes to ground zero, that's not like spiking the football, is it? Um, which he's, <laughs> I mean, that's a question. <laughs> Uh, well, you know, it, it, it sort of is a, a victory dance that he's doing in a way. And I think uh, that that particular phrase um, sort of graded many Americans the wrong way um, because this is a man who didn't seem to have a problem with all of the young Obama supporters outside of the White House on Sunday night cheering, many of them profanely and, and essentially spiking the football. Mm -hmm. um, and, and why shouldn't we? Uh, this is 10 long years in the making. Um, and. Uh, uh, Sean, you've been very gracious yourself about uh, giving Obama the credit that he does deserve. But, of course, in the ensuing uh, hours and, and days since that Sunday night uh, announcement, uh, there have been a lot of missteps and bungling, uh, uh, obviously, with regard to the so-called narrative about what really happened. Uh, and then with the um, placating and the submission and the surrender, uh, the appearance, if not the reality of it, with regard to the handling of these photos. And, and on your show, you've done a fabulous job of teaching people about the concept of Sharia. And there, on the flip side of that same coin, is another concept that every American should be aware of and be able to articulate, and that is the concept of dimitude. In other words, subjugation to the Sharia enforcers. And part of that, as we've seen from the Muhammad cartoons onward, uh, is this idea that you need to self-censor in order to appease the so-called called sensitivities of so many jihadi practitioners who have been inflamed for hundreds of years and centuries. It's not like the release of these photos is going to inflame yeah. them already uh, any more than they already All right. are. Let me ask you, let me go back to the issue of President Bush here for a minute, and I think this is important. Mm -hmm. The president's been lecturing us. This is a moment we can all come together once again. Um, if he had his way, this is just a fact. We always had the means to take out bin Laden. We just didn't have the intelligence. But because of enhanced interrogations, even Leon Panetta suggested that was a part of the success, uh, because of, of Gitmo, rendition, black sites, tough interrogations, you know, the very things that he was referring to as torture, the very things that Eric Holder was investigating for possible prosecution of, of CIA operatives, without these things, this success would not have been possible on Sunday. So the question is, why can't the president graciously go out there, he's had a number of days now, and say thank you to President Bush for his part in creating the scenario under which this could happen. Well, that's the least he could do. And my column today imagines what a truly unifying, truly gracious speech would be. And it would have been wonderful to see the two of them together. Of course, it's never going to happen. Um, and I made that clear in my not so uh, gentle sarcasm in, in, in the column that I wrote today on this, where I urged President Obama to show unity rather than just tell and preach it. And it, it would be the least that he could do to ignore 
acknowledge the structures that were put in place by the Bush administration, the relentless criticism and demonization, uh, yeah. not just suffered by President Bush, but all of his top officials at the Pentagon, at the Justice Department. There are some of his Justice Department uh, heroes who today get dogged by some of these unhinged leftists in their private homes, get dogged by some of these zealots uh, still uh, trotting around in their Gitmo orange suits. Uh, well, and let me ask as you this. I. Uh, well, let me just, yeah. uh, there's yeah. one more point I want to make because I really definitely want to throw Jay Carney's words right back at him, Sean. He said there's no one single act that led to uh, the capture and killing of bin Laden. That is certainly true. And I think that in addition to tipping uh, Obama's hat to, to, to Bush on enhanced interrogations, rendition, uh, Gitmo, that every single post 9-11 counterterrorism measure that was taken, not just overseas, but here here at home, Department of Homeland Security me, uh, rounding up a lot of illegal alien fugitives of from terror calling nations. All of it. Let me, you're right. And also, it is troubling that this narrative has changed, that he wasn't hiding behind women, that he wasn't armed. I don't care if he was armed. I don't, it, the, the story doesn't matter. These SEALs did the right thing. And the same issue with not releasing the pictures. I think a big mistake. But I want to ask you as it relates to the, the funeral on a U.S. warship, on an aircraft carrier. Because, you know, first of all, we're told. Bin Laden is not a Muslim, that he has basically hijacked a religion, religion perverted a religion, uh, which I agree with. I, most mm -hmm. Muslims, I don't think, agree with him, but we do have radical Islamists, and we've got to deal with them. We're at war with them. But they did this according to Islamic law. They, uh, that, that was the purpose of this. And they buried him at sea within 24 hours, thought they were practicing and following through on it. They cleaned his body. feel sorry for the guy that stuck with that job. Uh, <laughs> they wrapped him in a shroud. 45 minutes, apparently, of a funeral uh, translated into Arabic for a guy that's not even Muslim, according to the president, correct? Yeah, that's right. Uh, there's a lot of uh, illogic, dimitude illogic going around, and this certainly is a big part of it. And, and you're, you're absolutely right, Sean, to point out um, these inconsistencies in treating this man who warped a religion by those same uh, religious standards that he warped. And of course, there's this also this idea that somehow that there's, there's going to be this backlash if we don't pander to the sensitivities of these Muslims. Well, if these Muslims truly believe that uh, bin Laden was a warper, why would they care one no. way or the other? If we publish the pictures. A good point, and I, I still contend that uh, they're going to be pressured into doing so. Michelle Malkin, always good to see you. Thank you. You bet. Thanks. All right. Thanks. Let not your heart be troubled. Our great, great, great American panel is next. And tonight on our great, great American panel, he is a policy advisor at Economics 21, a blogger for National Review Online, and an online columnist for The Daily. Raihan Salam is here, and he was part of the Obama campaign, media team's Democratic strategist, one and only Steve Murphy, and the author of the New York Times bestseller, Washington Post bestseller, which drives liberals nuts. Righteous Indignation, great book, by the way. I enjoyed it. Uh, Andrew Breitbart is here. Guys, good to see you. Um, you know, I would, Steve, I said, I think it took a lot of courage for the president. It was a gutsy decision, because he could have bombed the place, to go in, re, send our seals in the best of the best, because he wanted to show the world and make sure we got them. And every movie's made since. I think from the burial, to getting rid of the body, to not releasing the photos has been a mistake. You think we didn't get him? No, I think, I know we got him. Okay. That's not the point. I think, as Ann Coulter said, we have a right, we paid for his death, we have a right to see those photos. No, I don't think that's correct, and I think he's thinking like a parent. He has two young children, and he understands how all-pervasive this photograph would be. I've let my 12-year-old son team. watch Gladiator and Braveheart yeah. and The Passion of the Christ. Nobody so gets killed in here. there for real. Uh, Sunday night, the President of the United States hit a grand slam. The first thing I did was go on to Twitter and write, congratulations, President Obama, the armed services and the intelligence services. And ever since that moment, it seems like his political team, so used to playing politics with everything, is trying to walk back that grand slam and w wants to put him back on second base. The American people, want, back on first the American base. people want closure. Muslims around the world. Uh, the president says that the religion was hijacked. 
so to say that we're going to be offending the sensibilities of Muslims doesn't make sense to me and to many people. And he killed many Muslim people. This is about closure. Ten years of people waiting and waiting and waiting. And people want closure. To see it. I agree. Um, that is the point, though, and I mentioned this earlier in the program. Supposedly, he wasn't a Muslim, meaning bin Laden. And I, you know, I don't think he was. He represents Islam. He is a radical Islamist and a, and a terrorist. So why the 45-minute translated to Arabic, perfect timing on the funeral, you know, Islamic custom and law? Why? He's I, not. I think Ann Coulter made a great point. That's just the way we do business. The United States is going to say, look, this guy called himself a Muslim. We'll treat him like one, whether or not we actually respect his claim to being a Muslim. And I think that that's fair. We do not play by their rules. We play by our rules. And those rules mean treating people with some respect, including the most loathsome, vile criminal ever why, known. Why, Steve? There was no way this would have happened but for the policies of, of George W. Bush. What we know about this is that the courier, because of interrogations, uh, black site uh, interrogations, Gitmo interrogations, inter enhanced interrogations and te techniques, all because of Bush, the very policies Obama opposed. And it wouldn't have happened. Not one good word yet. John McCain opposed those policies, not one good, too. Not John one, McCain also opposed those policies. Forget about this, this day wouldn't have happened but for President Bush's policies. He can't credit George Bush in any way? Uh, well, ac actually, he did credit when? George Bush and say we should come together. But you want to raise this question. You're trying to make a big political deal out of it. So let, let's look at what really happened. George Bush did not put enough boots on the ground in Afghanistan oh to get bin Laden in the first place. Everything's Bush's fault. This is not a ground war. Hey, do, this, I this Andrew, Navy, do I get to finish? This is a Navy hey, SEAL team. I'm talking, okay? I'm not finished yet. Oh, he withdrew special forces to prepare for Iraq. He had a decision to make. He made a decision. Right. Iraq is more Steve, important. Steve, I got your point. You Obama know, made Steve, the I got your decision. Point. Right, We're going to get bin Laden. This is an obsession. You blame Bush, blame Bush, blame Bush. But the one time, this is the one time where actually they can blame Bush and when he's invited Bush to meet with him tomorrow. Yeah. Well, look, uh, they like Obama's. The left likes Obama's rendition of rendition, but they don't like Bush's rendition of rendition. At the end of the day, this was what the the American people were looking for. They were looking for pragmatism over ideology. This was his triangulation. This was his Dick Morris moment where he, he took Bush's policies and implemented them. The American people were looking for him not to be political, the political animal that he's been for the but last two years. Where, and it was gonna, a great moment for him. Are we going to continue rendition? Are we going to go back to enhanced interrogation techniques? Because if we want that's the, the success. Con, that's the confusion. It worked. Acknowledge what worked. Acknowledge that you've made mistakes in the past, that you've been rhetorically dove-like. And right now, the American people are rewarding you for doing the right thing. Yeah, but wait a minute, this is the same White House that wants to Mirandize enemy combatants on the battlefield. Here's the thing that I want to throw out there. No, they don't. We, everyone's yes. talking about Americans, blaming Bush or blaming Obama. I just want to here. suggest that no. maybe we blame Pakistan. Now, this is a country that we poured billions of wait dollars into Pakistan since said 2001. Today that they told us about this compound in 2009, and we didn't listen to them. You believe that? You believe Pakistan? Well, I'm, I'm Do you believe these people? Do you believe the I ISI? think we should investigate it. Oh, of course we should investigate we should. it. But you, you know the truth? The ISI? You know the truth. I know the truth is, is they've been playing a double game for decades That I now. believe. I'm not actually Well, we also, I've actually. reported, and nobody has denied it, that Mullah Omar was captured by the ISI last year. Uh, and, I, and they need to be honest. All right, we're going to come back more with our great, great American panel as I throw to the one and only. Am I allowed to say your name? John Andrasik, five for fighting. All right, see if we can catch him on camera catching us. Ready? Here it comes. And we continue with our great American panel. Uh, uh, Richard Menden uh, Hall of, the, of the, the Steelers tweeted that what kind of person celebrates death? It's amazing how people can hate a man they have never heard speak. Well, we've heard him speak. We've only heard one side. I, I, I heard those comments. I was stunned. What do you think? Wow. Well, I think he is going to get a lot of flack for it. And I think that we need to remember, I mean, you know, he's a pretty young guy and he's probably going to regret what he said. So I'm well, he's since kind of apologized, but apologize, yeah. yeah, there you go. Yeah. But I wonder, you know, what is wrong with athletes? If, if you're going to say something, think through it a little bit. No, this is this is Hitler. This is Tojo. There's no there's no moral ambivalence about it whatsoever. 
he deserves to be dead. Leave tweeting to the professionals like Breitbart here. Yeah, Breitbart <laughs> yeah I would never tweet anything intemperate. No, no. I, I'm sitting here like, oh, please don't talk about Twitter gentle, and, gentle and soul who pressing things anything. like that. Can you say one good thing? And I don't want to hear your lectures about, about Iraq and about George W. Bush. Can you say one good thing that Bush did to contribute to what happened on Sunday? Yes, I believe that George Bush, from the time of 9-11, did everything that he thought was right to keep us safe. I think that he made a terrible did this strategic contribute decision to what happened Iraq, Iraq, no, but I believe that he thought he was doing what was did right. He, did his policies contribute to the success Sunday night? It has been a 10-year effort. You. It's been a 10-year effort. But George W. Bush's policies contributed, without which his policies, we wouldn't have had the success Sunday night. I, look, I don't know that. I don't know that the this intelligence that was developed through enhanced interrogation, but yes, George Bush has a hand in this. I will say that. Just as Barack Jeez, Obama so has. For, uh, all I can say to you is free yourself. On Sunday night, I tweeted out, congratulations, yes, President you did. Obama. It felt good. Mm -hmm. President Bush contributed. Just say it. He I just said it. But he contributed I to said it. His decisions kept us safe for eight years. It was an extraordinary I don't believe time. that torture made us safer. Guys, I can, Besides, I, can I don't think we should be... It wasn't torture. I can very simply and directly and why explain did we how this Japanese worked, okay? in prison for so doing it. So basically, this is a step-by-step -step process whereby you need to build a case gradually. One thing that President Bush did that President Obama did not is take a lot of enemy combatants. That was not an easy thing to do. A lot of the time, it was easier to just kill these guys. He collected them. He very I mean, controversially gathered these guys in Guantanamo, in Afghanistan, and in Iraq, and he gathered information, not only uh, through enhanced interrogation techniques, but also through the systematic process. That's how Let you figure you out an how example. a network works. Nancy Pelosi, I don't know if we have the SOT available, but Nancy Pelosi, do we have the SOT? Uh, we, all right, she said the following. She said, uh, George W. Bush in 2008, the president said you can run, but you can't hide Osama bin Laden. Apparently he could. And even if he's caught tomorrow, it's five years too late. He's done more damage the longer he's been out there. But in fact, the damage has been done. It's done. Even if we capture him now, it doesn't make us any safer. She had to be sure that he wasn't captured. Right, while that Bush was in was still 2006. Yeah. Now she says when President Obama does it, the death of bin Laden marks the most significant development in the, our fight against Al Qaeda. I salute the president, his national security team, Director Panetta, our men and women in the intelligence community, et cetera, et cetera, achieving this major accomplishment. Suddenly this is what politicizing. Is this is why she was demoted last, Oct uh, last November, is because they realized this was the most political person ever to hold the speakership ever. Yeah, I agree. No, we lost because of the economy. It didn't have anything to do with this, but I believe she that was, was wrong in 2006 that was the when she said that. I believe, as I said before, He's wrong George in 2006, Bush, everything right today. he did, he did to try to make America safer. He just made a terrible decision about All right, Iraq I got You said that versus, four times. But the point is, what does this say about her? She's nothing but a political hack. That's just, the she, this I, is a I political hack. I don't she's, agree yes, with that. Yes, you do. I can no, read your mind. More than that. I can read his mind. She's the one who the president to actually pass the health law when he was about to chicken out. She actually yeah. is the driving force of a lot of the biggest yeah. liberal accomplishments of the last uh, several yeah. years. Holy grail. Yeah, right. there you go. Great panel tonight. Congrats Thank on the you. book, by the way. The book is much. terrific. I love Thank it. Thank you. And uh, that's all the time we have left. Let not your heart be troubled. The news continues. Greta's next. See you tomorrow night.